Molt bona tarda a tothom i benvinguts. Estimats convidats i estudiants a punt de graduar-se, Cristina Gallat, director Jacín Jordana, president Narcís Serra, Fulià, a Paidín, estimades professores i professors, gràcies a tots per voler celebrar la graduació amb nosaltres. I will try, I promise, I will try to do my best to keep Drake from ranting about politics. She will try her very best. <laughs> First of all, I wanted to say what an absolute honor it is for us to have been chosen to speak today. It is one of the most exciting things I've ever been asked to do, so thank you. Um, this was a contested position, as we all know. Um, <laughs> we have to admit that the bar of expectation is very high. And we've been racking our brains trying to come up with something funny today to say, but um, Queen's memes would have been very helpful right now. Yes. Um, I have to admit, I was very surprised when I was notified, and I regretted saying yes immediately afterwards. I began thinking on excuses on why I couldn't do it. I mean, what do I know? I'm not wiser or smarter than any of you. And many of us can probably relate to how e easy it is to belittle ourselves and our accomplishments. And it is just outstanding how quickly we are to forget we were cast as leads in our own life. As we close this chapter, that wave of self-doubt might be rising as the, big, ne the next big question becomes, what are we going to do next? We usually get words of inspiration saying that the world belongs to us. Well, I don't know if any of you can relate, but I, for instance, I'm still looking for a paying job. I consider <laughs> moving with my parents for a while, so I feel like I literally own nothing. Um, but it's okay. We are thought to plan and get used to planning for all of our lives. Um, so it's kind of scary when our plans fall apart, right? But having a plan fall apart right before me brought me here, and it's been such a lovely experience. So thank you all. And um, some can relate to that horrible feeling right now also of not having a plan right away, which is terrifying. Um, but as we all know, plans don't always work out. Uh, so these challenges are what makes us who we are, so don't shy away from uncertainty or what it's painful at first. Um, you, ha you might have just walked into your new plan. That is one of the many things I learned here, thanks to you. Somehow, life takes you not where you want, but where you need to be. As I struggled to write this, memories from our first day in Barcelona rushed in. Those first few awkward meetings, which led to the creation of nearly a 1,000 WhatsApp groups, <laughs> and nights at Battleborn, which you would think would have been banned after someone found a cockroach, apparently. Uh, <laughs> but no, you guys are gross and kept going there. Um, of course, this was written in the student room, which next to some of you fiercely type in your last essay. And despite having one of the most beautiful libraries, we just kept going to that room. Just something about that room. Um, even you would think that master students would be getting partying on Saturdays, but we spend the entire last semester trying to break into that room every Saturday morning. We partied afterwards. Um, nine months ago, we arrived to Barcelona to start a master's. There were times I, at least, wanted to give up, pack my books and bags, and leave. And honestly, that would have been the easier choice, but we're not here for easy. We stuck through it, long nights, at the student room getting kicked out by security, um, tears, all-nighters, and all that alcohol when everything else failed. And for everything that lies ahead, I encourage, you to, I encourage you to do the same. I encourage you to never relent. As most of you would agree, coming to eBay was pretty challenging. It was also very enriching. We learned about each other. We learned valuable knowledge from our professors. And more importantly, we learned about ourselves. But what struck me as odd the very first day, and still does, is despite uh, the differences between our cultures, our nationalities, and religions, we all generally share a common vision. For a cohort that represents nearly 100 countries, it is nothing short of remarkable that we have one idea in common, let alone many. Broadly speaking, our values are as follows. We support democracy. <laughs> we believe in human rights. We cherish minority rights and vehemently defend them. We agree that one person should equal one vote, and we cringe at unchecked corporate power. We believe that health care as a human right is not a controversial issue. We question archaic gender roles and advocate for equality of men and women. To varying degrees, we believe in economic intervention, 
Military interventions, however, we agree, should be used as a last resort. We not only empathize with and reshape our habits around the environmental crisis, but have been so deeply moved to action by the existential crisis facing our planet and enraged by the tepid responses of our leaders to solve this crisis that we have quite literally vowed to enter the political realm to change it, myself included. These are frustrating times to be alive. The, ta the task in front of us is daunting. We are the first generation of the last century to be poorer than its parents, and the situation is bleaker in the global south. For some of us, our homes are being ravaged by new civil wars or authoritarian leaders. And for others, our seemingly intact democracies are experiencing backsliding and the undoing of checks and balances meant to protect institutions and citizenry. For others still, our homes are experiencing a resurgence of fascist or extremist parties that echo the pre-World War II era, one of the darkest moments in modern history. The world is full of monsters. Some of them, unfortunately, happen to be world leaders. And I'm not urging you to take on the world by yourself. In this individualistic and oppressive society, the most revolutionary thing you can do is fight together. Borrowing from Ella Baker, who once said, if you have strong people, you do not need strong leaders. As I look around, I only see strong people. <laughs> and it's a scary thing. To face our contemporary issues is terrifying. But bravery is not measured by a lack of fear. Bravery is to not turn away from what is frightening and to stand up for what, you, what your heart knows to be fair and right. In our current state, to take a stand is a necessity. I have no doubt that all of you will continue on to your exciting and rewarding lives. What I want from you is to ask wherever you are, whatever you're doing, what and who am I standing for? If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. To many, even the most optimistic, it may seem that our planet is entering a dark eve of war phase. We've been told by our elders, our goals are too lofty, they're too ambitious, maybe too expensive or too flawed. What they are essentially telling us is, give up. It's impossible to change things. Do not try. They'd like us to believe that we are so small that we cannot possibly enact significant change, that we cannot master humanity's problems and its consequences. However, it is precisely small groups at key moments in history that have charted the course for the future. In 1516, Sir Thomas More wrote his book, Utopia, a magical city where the leaders were elected by the whole of the people. Little did he know that a few hundred years later, his own country, Britain, would be elect elected in exactly the same way. In 1914, Jean Jaurès, tired of war and strife, imagined a peaceful and united Europe. Little did he know that such would be Europe's fate nearly 40 years later. Today, our task is the same, to imagine a better, more peaceful, and more united world. For some, the problems we are facing are just the pendulum of history swinging in one direction to be swiftly corrected in a generation or two, which implies that someone will swing that pendulum. But an action cannot happen without an actor, and that actor, my friends, is you. So imagine with us. Imagine if our generation were to take power. Imagine if we entered the halls of office with a vision of radically changing the world before the worst case scenarios took place. Imagine we transitioned from and banned the use of fossil fuels. Imagine if we could sequester carbon to bring the climate back to balance. And imagine if we prevented the extinction of the one million species the UN says will die within our lifetime. Imagine if we took our core message and lived by it, that despite its flaws, democracy is good and not only deserves protection, but merits expansion into the places where it is weak or not yet present. Imagine if we had education systems so robust and economies so centered around citizen well-being that they became models to emulate the world over. Imagine if no one died for want of health or ability, excuse me, inability to pay. And imagine if political checks and balances lived up to their name. What's more is instead of imagining for, or looking for a leader to accomplish these feats, you simply looked in a mirror. We have to continue working and fighting for the values we know to be fair. Social and environmental justice, equality, feminism. We could keep enjoying the pleasures of our individual worlds. But I encourage you to find other ways. Taking a stand, acknowledging our, our position, and acting with responsibility in regards. 
This will be long, arduous fights, but in life, there is only the try. For far too long, our leaders have practiced politics as the art of the possible and the practical. It is time we practice politics as the art of making what appears to be impossible, possible. That's why I want each and every one of you to fight like our lives depend on it, because for many of us, they do. And so, as we enter our new careers within the following weeks and months, after much rest and deliberation, we will be back at it, at this fight of wills and wants, of emancipation and reprisals, this political project of human liberation, centuries in the making, to fulfill the democratic promises made at our start, not yet met in our present. Muchas gracias y felicitaciones. Thank you.